Hey, today I'll be talking about episodes 59 through 61 of Legend of Jin Huan. Things in the palace are tense as the Empress pushes for punishing Jingxi and Su Sheng for their illicit affair. The Emperor is understandably hesitant to punish his best servant and Jin Huan's best maid. You heard me, Huan Bi. In the end, it's actually Duan Fei that plays a starring role in resolving this problem. Since she doesn't seem to have a side in the fight, he's more willing to listen to her. She says the rule is unjust. It makes sense for the lonely palace people to find love in each other. If it doesn't affect their work, why should they be punished? The emperor is happy to hear someone give him an excuse to let this go. He touches her shoulder and thanks, and she reacts so much that it makes me wonder how long she's gone without even a slightly romantic touch. Decades, probably. The emperor is convinced and decides to turn a blind eye to servant relationships in the future. Jingxi is fined a year's salary and sent back home. The scene of Su Pei Sheng coming back is pretty sweet. I don't truly believe that two people with such a huge imbalance of power between them can be considered friends, but it's clear that the emperor cares about him in his own way. In fact, later, he lets the two of them officially get married. At the next morning meeting, the other women are expecting Jin Huan to have hidden Jingxi away and to show up with her tail between her legs, but no. Pregnant as hell, the boss, Jin Huan, has not lost a step. Not only is she not hiding Jingxi, but she lets her loose on Qi Pian, asking her who exactly stuck that stick so far up her butt. Was she not just grounded for beating her servants? Who is she to judge anyone? I love everything about this scene, she shuts them up like it's nothing. The real kicker though is that the Emperor has pretty much allowed the relationship and all others to continue. So unless someone wants to step up and say the Emperor made the wrong decision, there's nothing else to say. A holiday is coming up and Jin Huan will be seeing Guo Wang for the first time in months. Huan Bi gets herself all dolled up because of course she does. They meet at the party and exchange the appropriate greetings, trying hard not to make things look too awkward. <laughs> when Jin Huan excuses herself, Guo Wang takes the opportunity to sneak out and meet with her in private for the saddest reunion ever. Oh my god, why are you making this so hard? It's clear he doesn't love her any less than he did before, but it's also clear that nothing has changed since then either. They tell each other to take care. After Guo Wang leaves, Huan Bi says she thinks she saw someone peeping on them, but they have no idea who it could have been. On their way home that night, they hear a bunch of cats and before they know it, they're surrounded. Everyone gets scared and Jin Huan's chair is dropped. She immediately goes into labor, officially one month earlier than she should have, but actually right on time. The Emperor and the Empress arrive, and it's a tough one, but she is able to give birth safely. She has a prince and a princess, meaning she now officially has three children. Uh, maybe four if you count Long Yuan. Also, since he's technically their uncle, the family resemblance between the twins and the Emperor makes total sense. The Emperor decides to promote Jun Huan to noble consort. Hua Fei is rolling in her grave for sure. Jun Huan is officially at the highest title she was able to attain in life. Now that that hurdle is passed, it's time to finally have the talk with Jing Fei. Jun Huan asks her bluntly why she's trying to hurt her. We all saw Jing Fei trying to get the Empress to punish Jin Huan for Jing Shi's affair with Su Pei Sheng. Jing Fei crumbles like a house of cards. She admits that she was scared of losing Long Yue. She has literally nothing else in her life, and of course she's come to love the girl as a mother. This is probably my favorite monologue. Jing Fei talks about how she knows the exact number of bricks in her palace. She knows which ones have started to form cracks. She knows because she spent so many nights counting them, pretty much waiting around to die. I think this is really the hardest part of being a consort. Not the scheming, but the loneliness. At least schemes are exciting, but they require the emperor to have an interest in you. If he doesn't, you spend your life on the sidelines, never to know romance. There are characters like this in every harem drama, and of course in real life. Sometimes they were only married for political reasons, but the emperor wasn't interested in them at all. They weren't allowed to leave the palace. Real friendship is almost impossible to come by, so really, it's just a slow march to death. She promises that she never really meant Jun Huan harm, she just wants her daughter. Yeah, I guess I'm calling her her daughter. Jun Huan gives her blessing and asks Jing Fei to take good care of Long Yue. To be fair, she does have three other children, and she doesn't know Long Yue at all, really. Not to mention, it's not a total separation, she can see Long Yue pretty much anytime she wants. It was definitely the right choice. Also, not to be too calculating, but Jing Fei will undoubtedly be 100% loyal to her going forward, so... Jun Huan is officially promoted and the Emperor takes it a step further, asking the Empress to take some time off for her health and putting Jun Huan in charge of the day-to-day -day harem matters. The Empress is a good actress, but I know she's thinking, oh, I should have killed her when I had the chance. 
Junhuan takes to her new position and things settle down. One day, she runs into Lan Yi who asks to meet with her in private. Lan Yi wastes no time and as soon as they round a corner, she pulls a knife on her. After all of these carefully planned and well thought out schemes, it's kind of refreshing to see a woman just ready to stab someone. Junhuan doesn't seem that scared and reveals that she knows it was Lan Yi's cats that caused all that drama earlier. Actually, even though Lan Yi meant for that to hurt Junhuan, it actually helped her because it gave her an excuse for why she delivered so early. But anyway, Junhuan didn't say anything because she knows that Guo Wang saved her life once. Out of respect for their relationship, she left it at that. Lan Yi is surprised to hear that they are so close. She says that she saw Junhuan and Guo Wang that night during the banquet and wants to know why she betrayed him for the emperor. It's clear that Lan Yi has been in love with Guo Wang since he saved her and wants to hurt Junhuan for hurting him angry that she apparently gave up what Lan Yi would give anything to have. By the way, that's two consorts in love with Guo Wang and zero for the Emperor. In the end, Lan Yi doesn't hurt her, but it's hard to tell if she will be a friend or foe going forward. Speaking of enemies, unable to take out her frustration on Jin Huan, she decides to mess with Ling Rong and has her medicine poisoned. It gives her the voice of a 30-year smoker. Ling Rong's first thought is the Emperor won't like her anymore now that she can't sing. It's tough having a world this small. The rats at the bottom of the ladder pounce and start messing with Ling Rong. They don't even have squabbles with Ling Rong. Really, I think they're just bored. If the Emperor isn't seeing Jin Huan, then it's Mei Zhuang or maybe the Empress. They must be bored out of their minds. Despite Ling Rong still having the status of Imperial Concubine, she's treated like trash by the young girls. Poor Ling Rong has been hit with shitty hand after shitty hand. She has not once been in a good position. Anytime she has even a little bit of power, it's because someone else gave it to her. If not Jun Huan, then the Empress. And under the Empress, she had to take birth control so she knew that she would never truly make it to the top. Her voice has been one of the only things that has helped her stand out, and now she's lost that as well. I have seen a few conversations comparing Mei Zhuang and Ling Rong, and I will say that while I don't approve of Ling Rong's actions, these two should not be held to the same standards. Mei Zhuang is rich, or at least comfortable, whereas we've known from the first time we met Ling Rong that she is desperate to get money and honor for her family. Mei Zhuang is able to ignore the emperor and go to him when she wants, because she's pretty, well-read, and her family can support her. Ling Rong doesn't have those advantages, and that's through no fault of her own. If she were to take on Mei Zhuang's attitude, there is no way in hell anyone would make an effort to get her back together with the Emperor. She would be leaving her family to languish. I guess I'm just saying, it's a privilege to be able to ignore the Emperor, and while Ling Rong has done really bad things, I don't blame her as much as I do some of the other women. <laughs> the Empress. <laughs> Till next time, thanks for watching.